In this lecture, we'll discuss quadratic functions and their properties. By definition, a quadratic function is a function of the form f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are real numbers, a is not equal to zero, and the domain of a quadratic function is all real numbers. Now, there's another form in which we can write a quadratic function that's called standard form. A quadratic function can be written in standard form, which is f of x equals a times x minus h squared plus k, where the point h comma k is the vertex of the parabola, which would be the graph of the function, and the line x equals h is the axis of, axis of symmetry for the parabola. So the first method that we can use to graph a quadratic is by using transformations. To graph a quadratic function via transformations, we'll first complete the square to get the standard form of the equation, and then we'll use that to create the graph. So, let's do an example. We have the quadratic function f of x equals negative 2x squared plus 6x plus 2. To complete the square, we're going to factor out a negative 2 from the first two terms, so we have negative 2 times x squared minus 3x, and then we're going to add 2 outside of these parentheses. Now we'll complete the square for x squared minus 3x. So remember to complete the square you take the middle term, the term that has an x in it, divide the coefficient by 2, so we have negative 3 divided by 2, and square that. So we have negative 3 over 2 squared, we're going to add that inside the parentheses to complete our square, and then outside of the parentheses we need to subtract it. Now note since our negative 3 over 2 squared is inside the parentheses it's being multiplied by negative 2, when we subtract the term from the outside, we also have to incorporate that negative 2. So we subtract negative 2 times negative 3 halves squared. Since we've completed the square, we can rewrite our problem negative 2 times x minus 3 halves quantity squared plus 2. And if we simplify the term that we subtracted, that'll give us plus 9 over 2. We want to add together the two terms outside of the parentheses. So we need a common denominator. We'll rewrite 2 as 4 over 2. And so this will give us f of x equals negative 2 times x minus 3 halves squared plus 13 halves. And so now our function is written in standard form. Now that our quadratic function is written in standard form, we can use the method of graphing by transformations, which we discussed earlier, to graph, this, to graph the, the function. We start by identifying the base. Since this function has x squared in it, we'll start with the square function x squared. And then we'll identify and apply different transformations. So first we have a negative sign outside of the square function. That's going to make the, the graph reflect about the x-axis. Next we have a 2 being multiplied outside of the square function, so that's going to give us a vertical stretch by 2. We're subtracting 3 halves inside the square function, so that will shift our graph to the right by 3 halves. Then we're adding 13 halves outside of the square function, which will shift the graph up by 13 halves. Let's look at another example. This time we have the quadratic function f of x equals x squared minus 6x minus 1. Take a few minutes and see if you can complete the square to write this in standard form. Once you think you have an answer, continue the lecture to see if you are right. The first thing we want to do to complete the square is we want to group the x squared term and the x term together and leave the constant outside. So we have x squared minus 6x inside a set of parentheses and minus 1 on the outside. To complete the square, we take the coefficient of the middle term, which is negative 6 in this case, and we divide it by 2 and square that. We're going to add that inside the parentheses and then subtract it outside of the parentheses. So we'll have x squared minus 6x plus a negative 6 over 2 squared minus 1 minus a negative 6 over 2 squared. Next, we can simplify. So the parentheses are going to become a perfect square. That'll be x minus 3 quantity squared. And negative 6 over 2 is a 3. And 3 squared is 9, so we'll have minus 1 minus 9 on the outside of the parentheses. And if we combine those together, that will give us x minus 3 squared minus 10. So again, now that we have our function in the standard form, x minus 3 squared minus 10, we can graph the function using transformations. We start with our base function of x squared. 
The minus 3 inside the parentheses will give us a shift to the right by 3, and the minus 10 outside of the parentheses will shift the graph down by 10. So the final graph will be this that's represented in magenta. This is the graph of f of x equals x minus 3 squared minus 10. Next we want to talk about identifying the vertex and axis of symmetry of a quadratic equation. So for the quadratic equation f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c where a is not equal to 0, we have a formula that we can use to find the vertex. The vertex will be the point negative b over 2a and then the function value of negative b over 2a for your y coordinate. The axis of symmetry, which is the vertical line that splits the graph parabola in half, will be given by x equals negative b over 2a. Note that when working with quadratic functions, the parabola, which is the graph of the function, will open upward if a is greater than 0, and the parabola will open downward if a is less than 0. So let's do an example where we find the vertex and axis of symmetry of a quadratic function. Consider the function f of x equals x squared minus 2x minus 3. Remember the formula for the vertex of the parabola is given by negative b over 2a for the x coordinate and the function value of negative b over 2a for the y coordinate. So let's start by finding the x coordinate of our vertex. The x coordinate will be negative b over 2a, so if we plug in negative 2 for b and 1 for a, that gives us negative negative 2 divided by 2 times 1, if we simplify both the numerator and denominator, that gives us 2 divided by 2, and so the x-coordinate of our vertex is just going to be 1. Now to find the y-coordinate of the vertex, we need to find the function value of the x-coordinate. So the function value at 1 will be 1 squared minus 2 times 1 minus 3. If we simplify that, that gives us 1 minus 2 minus 3, which is negative 4. So the vertex for the quadratic function f of x equals x squared minus 2x minus 3 will be the point 1, negative 4. And the axis of symmetry will be the line x equals 1. So another way to graph a quadratic function is to use its vertex, the axis of symmetry, and its intercepts. So let's continue our example. f of x equals x squared minus 2x minus 3. We've already found that the vertex is the point 1, minus 4. So let's find the intercepts. Remember, to find the x-intercepts, we set the y value, or f of x, equal to 0. So we'll have 0 equals x squared minus 2x minus 3. We can factor the quadratic out, so 0 equals x minus 3 times x plus 1. And then using the zero product property, that means either 0 equals x minus 3, or 0 equals x plus 1. If we solve each of those, we get x equals 3, or x equals minus 1. So our x-intercepts will be the points 3, 0, and negative 1, 0. And then to find the y-intercept, we set x equal to 0. So f of 0 equals 0 squared minus 2 times 0 minus 3. If we simplify that, we get f of 0 equals negative 3, and so our y-intercept will be the point 0, negative 3. We can plot the vertex, the x-intercepts, and the y-intercept on a set of axes, and then to sketch the parabola, we'll just connect those dots. So the graph of f of x equals x squared minus 2x minus 3 will look something like this. Let's look at another example where we want to sketch the graph of a, f of a quadratic function by using the vertex and the intercepts. So for this example we want to sketch the graph of f of x equals x squared minus 4x. We'll start by finding the vertex. The x-coordinate of the vertex is given by negative b over 2a, so we'll have negative negative 4 divided by 2 times 1, and if we simplify that, that'll give us 2. The y-coordinate for the vertex is found by finding the function value at the x-coordinate, so f of 2 equals 2 squared minus 4 times 2, which if we simplify gives us minus 4. So the vertex is the point 2 minus 4. Next we'll try to find the x-intercepts. So remember to find the x-intercept we set y or f of x equal to 0. So we'll have 0 equals x squared minus 4x, which we can factor to give us 0 equals x times x minus 4. And using the zero product property, that means 0 equals x, or 0 equals x minus 4. 
So if we solve each of those, we get x equals 0 or x equals 4. And so our x-intercepts are the points 0, 0, and 4, 0. Finally, to find the y-intercept, we set x equal to 0. So f of 0 equals 0 squared minus 4 times 0, which simplifies to give us f of 0 equals 0. So the y-intercept is the point 0, 0. We can plot the points 2, negative 4, 0, 0, and 4, 0 on a graph. So these are our vertex and 2x-intercepts and y-intercept. And then to sketch the parabola, we just connect the dots. Next, we want to find a quadratic function given its vertex and one other point. To do this, we'll use the standard form of the function, f of x equals a times x minus h quantity squared plus k. So let's look at an example. Find the quadratic function with vertex 2, 1 and point 0, 5. We'll start with the standard form for a quadratic function, f of x equals a times x minus h squared plus k. Remember, h and k are the x and y coordinates of your vertex, so we can plug those in since the vertex was given to us. This gives us f of x equals a times x minus 2 squared plus 1. And since we were given a second point, the point 0, 5, we can plug that point in for x and f of x, giving us 5 equals a times 0 minus 2 squared plus 1. And we can solve this equation for a. So if we simplify a little, we'll get 5 equals a times 4 plus 1. We subtract 1 from both sides of the equation, which leads to 4 equals 4a. We divide both sides of the equation by 4, and we find that a equals 1. So we can plug the a value of 1 into the standard form of the function using the vertex, and that gives us f of x equals 1 times x minus 2 squared plus 1, and we can simplify. If we FOIL out x minus 2 squared, this gives us f of x equals x squared minus 4x plus 4 plus 1. Finally, we combine like terms to get f of x equals x squared minus 4x plus 5. Let's look at one last example. So find the quadratic function with vertex 2, 3 and point 0, minus 1. Again, I encourage you to give this example a try on your own and then follow along with the slides once you feel like you have an answer. So, we start with the standard form, f of x equals a times x minus h squared plus k. Using our vertex, 2, 3, we insert the values for h and k. Remember, h is the x-coordinate of the vertex and k is the y-coordinate. So we have f of x equals a times x minus 2 squared plus 3. Next, we'll use the values from the other point, 0, negative 1, and plug those in for x and y, respectively, giving us negative 1 equals a times 0 minus 2 squared plus 3. If we simplify, that gives us negative 1 equals a times 4 plus 3. We subtract 3 from both sides of the equation, giving us negative 4 equals 4a. We divide by 4 and see that a equals negative 1. So we take our a value of negative 1 and we plug it back into the standard form with our vertex. So f of x equals negative 1 times x minus 2 quantity squared plus 3. If we FOIL out x minus 2 squared and distribute the negative 1 throughout the terms, we get negative x squared plus 4x minus 4 and then plus 3, which we can put together to get f of x equals negative x squared plus 4x minus 1. So this will be the function that has a vertex of 2, 3 and goes through the point 0, minus 1. So the last topic that we want to talk about in this section is finding maximum or minimum values for quadratic functions. Remember when a is less than 0, the graph of the parabola points downward, so the vertex will represent a maximum when a is less than 0, and it will represent a minimum when a is greater than 0. The maximum or minimum will occur at the vertex, so that occurs at x equals negative b over 2a, and it will have a value of f of negative b over 2a. So let's do an example. We want to find the minimum or maximum of f of x equals negative 2x squared plus 12x. If we examine the function that was given to us, we'll see that a is equal to negative 2, and negative 2 is less than 0. This means our parabola, our parabola opens downward, and so we'll have a maximum value. 
So next we want to find out where the maximum occurs by finding the x coordinate of the vertex. So we'll use that formula negative b over 2a. So we have negative 12 over 2 times negative 2. If we simplify that gives us negative 12 divided by negative 4 and negative 12 over negative 4 gives us a positive 3. Now to find what the maximum value is, we'll plug 3 into the function, so f of 3 equals negative 2 times 3 squared plus 12 times 3. If we simplify, that gives us negative 2 times 9 plus 36. Negative 2 times 9 is negative 18, so we have negative 18 plus 36. And negative 18 plus 36 is a positive 18, so the maximum value will be 18. Therefore, the maximum occurs at the point 3, 18. And one last example. We want to find the minimum or maximum value of the function f of x equals negative 2x squared plus 8x plus 3. Again, for this example, a equals negative 2, which is less than 0. That means the graph of the parabola will open downward, which gives us a maximum value. To find where the maximum occurs, we need to find the x-coordinate of the vertex, so we use the formula negative b over 2a, which is going to give us negative 8 over 2 times negative 2. If we simplify the multiplication, that gives us negative 8 over negative 4, which is a positive 2, so our maximum occurs at x equals 2. Now to find what the maximum value is, we'll plug that 2 value in for x. So f of 2 equals negative 2 times 2 squared plus 8 times 2 plus 3. If we simplify a little, that gives us negative 2 times 4 plus 16 plus 3 which gives us negative 8 plus 19, which will simplify to be a positive 11. So the maximum for the function f of x equals negative 2x squared plus 8x plus 3 occurs at the point 2, 11.